If you grew up watching TV, you've probably seen a commercial or two in your lifetime for a toy. Whether it was something you'd see on the daily, or that rare shortcut infomercial that popped up a handful of times every month between episodes of Spongebob, toy commercials serve an incredibly unique purpose. Normal commercials are created to convince the singular watcher to buy that product, but toy commercials have two parties in mind. Isn't there someone you forgot to ask? Toy commercials are first intended to convince a kid that they want the toy, and are then tasked with convincing their parent to buy it for them. This is the secret sauce to toy infomercials, more particularly those as seen on TV commercials, aka baby's first scam. As seen on TV refers to a specific marking on products that are advertised through infomercials that usually have been cut down to a commercial length of roughly 30 seconds, with some even having two minute long cuts to air between whatever show is airing at the time. These commercials advertise a range of products from home and wellness to food to what we're primarily concerned with today, toys. These commercials would often include a phone number you could call, or even at times an address to mail an order to, as the products featured in these commercials would also often find their way into similar product catalogs. Now, of course, I'm not saying that all as-seen-on-TV commercials are for toys, so we're excluding those that aren't today. But I also need to define that some real honest name brand stuff has had some rough form of an as-seen-on-TV commercial, so I won't be including anything like that. What I'm particularly talking about is those commercials that are all narrated by the same guy and look like they were made in the 90s regardless of how recent the product is. For example, the Big Top Cupcake baking set that I wanted vehemently and never got, like it goes for all kids who've seen any of these commercials. There's stuff in these commercials that aren't necessarily toys but are heavily marketed towards kids, so some of that will end up in this video. Let's just get into it. Say hello to the Pillow Pets! Starting with what is arguably the most popular of as-seen-on-TV toys, pillow pets are a stuffed animal whose whole gimmick is that they can be folded in half to look like a quadrupedal pet, but also be unfolded to act as a flat pillow with a big silly head. Remembered mostly for its very simple jingle, it's a pillow, it's a pet, it's a pillow pet, these wonderful little guys ruled the world. I want to do a video about these on their own in the future because they do have quite an interesting tale to tell, so I'll try to be as brief with the background on these as possible. A mom came up with the concept for these in 2003 after she noticed that one of her kids had flattened out one of their stuffed animals on purpose in order to sleep on it like a pillow. Fast forward to the end of that year and she's got a deal to have specifically designed pillow pets manufactured to be sold at mall kiosks and such. The success they saw here ultimately led to further sales points brought on by advertising in the form of as-seen-on-TV commercials beginning in 2004. The pillow would stand on its four little feetsies and then you'd undo the velcro strap holding them together and it would unfold into a little pillow. Nowadays, the Pillow Pets brand has expanded enormously, primarily because of the prominence of these as-seen-on-TV ads being aired non-stop between cartoons throughout all of the late 2000s and early 2010s. Pillow Pets have gotten many licensed versions in the form of very popular characters like Freddy Fazbear. <laughs> I cannot go even one video without mentioning FNAF. There's a Spongebob one. <laughs> Someone help me. <laughs> in this case, the brand's success really speaks for itself. Pillow Pets have been able to adapt and withstand the test of time because they actually serve a purpose and function and are cute as a little cherry on top. Many mommy blogs and other reviews say that they're very durable and stay fairly nice even after years of having them. They're very easy to wash and don't fall apart when handled. They keep their shape. Very positive reviews here. These pets originally sold for $19.99, which would be $31.66 today. It's one of the few toys on here that actually come across close to exactly how they're seen on TV. You're about to be mesmerized. It's here. It's wild. It's sweeping the nation. It's Mushigi! Moving on to one that I think everyone is familiar with on the grounds that we all know it's a scam now, Fushigi Ball is a toy that's marketed as a magic gravity ball, and its popular commercials feature a spokesperson for the toy, as well as both child and teenage participants using the toy, to a degree which the viewer is led to believe is basic. In other words, they make it look easy to use the ball, sort of juggling it back and forth between their hands, spinning it at times, with the Fushigi Ball looking like it's genuinely floating between their hands and through their motions. The teens make it look easy to perform impressive tricks with the ball, and it's suggested that the buyer would be able to replicate such tricks on their own, 
In reality, the trick they're showing off here is called contact juggling, a literal skill you have to develop over time. Of course, they don't tell you that these teens have likely been trained a little beforehand, or that some of them are actually skilled plants, or even that some of the disembodied hands in the commercial are cleverly cut to look like it's whatever kid they had shown before doing the tricks. What they want you to believe is that the ball is responsible for this kind of motion, rather than the dedicated profession that is contact juggling. Jugglers, I am at your defense. A lot of people were genuinely fooled by this advertising, despite the acting and reactions in the actual commercial feeling lackluster and put on. Parents bought this for their kids thinking that it was literally a magic ball, and what they ended up getting was... Can motorcycles not go by, like, 60 miles an hour while I'm recording? Where was I? Parents bought this for their kids, thinking that it was literally a magic ball, and what they ended up getting was a one pound iron ball meant for someone who actually knows how to use it. The commercialization of such a tool and its marketing as a toy offended many people in the juggling community, and has most likely tarnished the reputation of contact jugglers forever. I would be mad too if someone took a tool important to my very hyper-specific niche skill and tried to make it look like any old Joe mama could do it. If you don't have any prior contact juggling skill, maybe don't buy it, because because the DVD it comes with, that claims to be instructional in nature, doesn't teach you anything at all about how to do the actual contact juggling, because it still wants to act like a commercial that you basically paid for, fluffing the Fushigi Ball as a genuinely magic object. The Fushigi Ball, like the Pillow Pet and a lot of the other toys on this list, retailed at $19.99, which would be $27.43 today. $19.99 is a common pricing for these toys due to their nature of being either a scam like this one or low quality as it was reasonable for companies to create their cheap products for a low cost, and inflate that cost to probably quadruple the production cost to profit greatly. This isn't true for everything, as is evident with the Pillow Pet reviews, and I also think the cost of paying the company running these as seen on TV commercials also factors in there, just based on what little I know about business. Reviews of the Fushigi Ball cite the cost to value ratio as a major problem with it, other than that the individual who it was bought for wasn't already a contact juggling champion. Google reviews from eBay and Walmart on the product, frozen in time from when the Fushigi Ball came out, mostly read that it was not what was expected when purchased. One in particular reads, Not a any kind of special ball. This is not a magic gravity kind of thing in this ball. One surprising one in support of the balls reads, This is a Christmas gift for 2011. I plan to buy five more over the next few months. I'm sure all will like them. I think you got to the review step too early. <laughs> Some are more recent, people who have bought them simply for nostalgia. Good price. Now I have balls of steel. What happens when you take great big fuzzy noodles and mix them with some wild and wacky pieces and parts? Well, that's where the fun just starts. Fazoodles! Have you ever wanted to pay $20 for a handful of pipe cleaners and some potato head parts? That is something you can absolutely do with Fazoodles. I don't have to do much more explaining because that's just exactly what it is. The product information page on the actual As Seen on TV website says that the package comes with 12 long Fazoodles, 12 short Fazoodles, 24 Fazoodle parts which include eyes, mouths, and other accessories, and an idea booklet. I think this just speaks for itself. The description also says that they quote, provide endless fun for boys and girls, which A, is not true because my mom got me these from Walmart for less than the commercial price and they still weren't worth it because they were boring within the first hour we had them, and B, everything comes to an end. They also said they make oddles of different fazoodle combinations, so I think someone got confused about the branding here. What was that supposed to be? I actually never thought about putting them on a pen, that's actually cute. Is it bad that I want some now? <laughs> these are so scrunkly. I actually cannot find any reviews on these that don't honestly boost the look of Fuzzoodles, really. Just use your common sense. Does this really look like something you'd pay that much money for? They're marketed as a set of materials. It's like a Lego set in the sense that creating it isn't the play. The using your imagine to use it afterwards is. But it's cooler with Lego because you can build trucks and helicopters and junk. It's basically a craft rather than a toy, and even if they they can be reused, a lot of the used product being sold on eBay looks bent out of shape and has likely lost its form in that sense, meaning that they do wear down at some point. $19.99 just seems like a lot of money to pay for something you can replicate in a more personal way at home. I also feel like a lot of kids would make their thing and want to keep it how it is. Nothing is wrong with good old super glue, you guys. Ooh, what's this? And this? And this? And this? They crunch when you squish them, stick to each other, and build like no other! They're fun! Controversial entry on the list, I see. 
Everyone wants to be the next construction toy, kind of like how I talked about with Fazoodles. The most popular ones are usually more hard and blocky like Lego, but there are some brands that think outside the box a little, and Bunchums are one such example of this. Bunchums are basically little furry looking balls that are covered in velcro-like hooks, so they can be stuck together to each other in any fashion you so choose. This makes them a good tool in creating more organic products when compared to other construction toys. Similarly to Fazoodles, Bunchums would also come with accessory pieces like eyes and mouths to decorate your creations. Look at this little scrumbly car! Bunchums boast being squishy and relatively pleasant to the touch, despite having such a rough textured surface. You'd think something covered in little hooks would hurt, like a cat's tongue or something. So these are actually more interesting than Fazoodles to me, simply because the actual construction pieces are something that can't be easily replicated at home, so the $19.99 or $25.67 today that you're paying for them is worth that fact alone. These sets aren't criticized for much, on the contrary, they're hailed for being quite creative, with some nitpicks being their small size, making them easy to lose, but that could be said for a lot of Lego pieces and perler beads and stuff like that too. The other more obvious complaint is quite a serious one. Given the texture of the Bunchums, they cleverly stick to each other and also most everything else they come in contact with. In January of 2021, the popular news broadcast Inside Edition covered a case where a six-year-old got 150 Bunchums stuck in her hair promptly turning it into an incredibly tangled and matted mess. An image of the girl's bunchum infested hair went viral in the same year, with the mother describing in the Facebook post concerning the matter that she'd spent approximately 20 hours carefully removing the bunchums from her hair and combing it back to normal. She effectively warned other parents of the danger, and while it is not a life-threatening one, it could pose a huge problem and is the biggest downside to bunchums. Additionally, she filed an actual complaint about the lacking nature of the warning on the packaging to the toy's producer, Spin Master and a spokesperson pointed the public to the fact that they'd gotten such complaints for years and had posted actual videos on YouTube about how to remove the toys should they end up in your hair. The problem is now considered a big downside to the toys, but it really doesn't detract from the fun as long as you mind what little warning is there and keep them away from your head. Ball pets come from outer space. They came to Earth. I will be honest about this one, I never personally saw the commercial for ball pets specifically, but I wanted to cover them because I noticed something interesting about them. Ball pets are a plush whose gimmick, like pillow pets, is that they have basically two forms they can be in. They have two distinct halves, the head and the tummy, and when you fold them in half, the two round halves fold into a ball. They have this sort of metal skeleton in them, somewhat similar to a slap bracelet where it can bend pretty freely and keep its form, giving the plush its rounded look. They're really cute and I think they're charming, not to mention the overall idea of them is pretty unique. But think about it, ball pets seems like such a lackluster name. And why do those renders look so bad? And how come this advertisement feels like it came out of an ARG? It's because ball pets are a knockoff. In 2007, Spin Master released Furberries, a noticeably higher quality ball pet with actual branding that set them in a world of whimsy, giving them an actual background and story. I had one of these, I think it's still sitting around in a box somewhere. They even come with a DVD that tells their backstory that they live in something called the Rainbow Tree outside of the town of Berryville. The render on this is pretty much equally bad compared to the ball pets, but this movie came out in the 2000s, the ball pet one came out in 2014, it has no excuse to look that bad. A lot of as seen on TV products are often shameless copies of or takes on similar products and they even have a tendency to leech off of other as-seen-on-TV items. For example, the as-seen-on-TV branding of commercials has advertised both stuffies and tummy stuffers, which are both stuffed animals whose gimmick is that they have these creative compartments and zippered pockets to put stuff in. It is a very bold move for one of these products to blatantly rip off an actual big company's toy, and I feel like that's exactly why I haven't ever seen these or this commercial, suggesting to me that they rarely played it because they feared some kind of repercussion, but also wanted the money that whoever made ball pets gave to have their toy advertised by them? I don't know. Because I owned a furberry, I know from personal experience that a lot of love and moving back and forth between ball and animal wears their spine out fairly fast and leaves them with a broken back like this picture. Ball pets retailed at $19.99, which would be $25.26 today, and were most likely a cheaper alternative to the real thing, so they were probably made cheaper and wore out even quicker than this. It's probably safe to say they aren't worth the money, and if you really want one, you might as well get a higher quality official furberry. I had a lot of fun with this video. Um, if anyone was interested in me doing a video on another toy they saw in one of these commercials, just let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.